Good day everyone and welcome to today's Living Life. Recently one of my friends got a new job and he was telling me about um, what happened during his interview process. And um, so you have to remember he did get this job and um, he was telling me that during his interview um, his uh, potential employer, now employer, asked him you know, what is, your sal uh, what is your salary? And to which my friend, you know, gave the reply, you know, he's making this much amount, of, this amount of money right now. And then the other guy said, I want you to remember that your salary is just a number to me. It's just a number to me. In the next 12 months, I can double, triple, quadruple your salary. All that matters and all I need to know that I want to know is can you and will you be my man? Right? Will you serve me? Will you work for me with everything you got? Will you be my man? And your salary to me is just a number. Double, triple, quadruple, it, it's not a huge deal, right? Doesn't it sound great? And don't we all wish to be in this kind of situation one day? To be on the receiving end of such a statement, but also maybe even to be able to give such a statement. Now, God is like this employer, but times a million. Right, so we're going to see a little bit of that today. So let's read the passage and then we'll continue. First Chronicles chapter 17 verses 1 through 15. After David was settled in his palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar while the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord is under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you. But that night the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought Israel up out of Egypt to this day. I have moved from one tent site to another, from one dwelling place to another. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their leaders whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, This is what the Lord Almighty says, I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them any more as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also subdue all your enemies. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you. When your days are over and you go to be with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my love away from him as I took it away from your predecessor. I will set him over my house and my kingdom forever. His throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. So in today's passage, we see King David successful. He's now settled. He's been able to bring the ark uh, into Jerusalem successfully. Uh, he's made it. You know, he's settled. He's rich. He's powerful. He's conquered. And you're going to read a little bit more about that in just a couple of days. And then he says in the beginning of today's passage, here I am. And I want you to circle that I or highlight in some way um, first, right? Here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. Right? And then so uh, the thought, and, and you know what happens, it, but the thought is that I am living in this wonderful house, a mansion most probably, a palace made of expensive wood, nice wood, and or material, let's just say. But the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord is in a tent. I must do something. 
something must be done. And Nathan the prophet thinks it's a good idea, right? I mean, who wouldn't think it's a good idea to build a house for the Lord, to build something worthy for the presence of God to be in, to be under. And so David thinks, and I think we would all naturally think, I can do this for God. You know, I have the money, I have the ability, I have the people, the influence and the power, and I should, I should do this for God. And if I was to preach today's passage as an actual full sermon, I think I would title it, The Difference Between Two Eyes. The Difference Between Two Eyes. And I asked you to highlight the first eye just a short while ago, and it's highlighting the difference between David's use of I and then God's use of I as well. Now, to David's one eye in the beginning of the passage, God replies with 20 eyes of his own from verses 5 to 14. And I want you to highlight, circle or underline those in a different way to David's eye. Right? So I want you to be able to see the difference in one glance, um, all of God's use of eye and then David's one use of eye, 20 times from verse 5 to 14. And I'm not saying that David is becoming proud or he's thinking too highly of himself, right? In fact, I give David the full credit and the benefit of the doubt that he really, all he wanted to do was to honor God, right? As very often we do as well, right? We want to honor God and to be able to use our resources, the material and the money and time to honor God. But I think there's possibly one mistake and that mistake is the I, the I. The difference between I and I am, right? You know that that was, uh, God used that him, uh, as his name, right? Back in Exodus, I am, tell them, I am sent you. When he said to Moses, when Moses was asking for a name, you know, who sent me? And, you know, we like to begin with I, right? Like, you know, I like ice cream. I am so-and-so years old. I am this, I am that, I am a pastor, I am a doctor, I am a lawyer, etc., etc. I can do this, I will do this, I want to do this. We like to say, use that word a lot. You know, I can do and I will do. Even I love you, right? I believe in God. I believe in you, God. It begins with I, doesn't it? I, myself, yourself, is the subject and then comes the object to which I do and, you know, it, from I to you and so forth, you get my point, right? There's a lot of power in this very tiny letter, which is, actually, which is also a word and in the way that we use this word, I or letter as well. And for the last couple of weeks, um, in my head, I've had a song just kind of go over in my head uh, that I've been listening to on and, and here and there as well. The song is called Whole Heart. Uh, it was on one of the Passion albums. And one of the lines, it may not even be the, the actual theme of the song, but one of the lines towards the end of the chorus says, I know who I am because of who you are, you being God, right? I know who I am because of who you are. And this line stuck with me and, and it's still with me. And I was thinking like, what does that mean? Right? I know who I am because, because of who you are. In a sense, I know what it means, but I just, it just stuck with me and I was thinking about that. And then I came to today's passage and it kind of came together. And then uh, I was reminded of another song and the song title is a little closer to today's uh, topic is that you are, I am. That's the title, you are, I am. And this is really poetic, and it's a little bit abstract in a sense, but I want to read to you a little bit um, of the lyrics. It says, if you are the mountain, I am the climber. Here, you is God. If you are the ocean, I am the diver, for you are, I am. If you are the potter, I am the clay. If you are the sunlight, I am the day, for you are, I am. You are the vine, I am the branch. I am the dancer, you are the dance. And then the chorus says, you are I am, and there is no other. You are my passion, my vision, my color. You are I am, my everything. You are I am, you are I am. Now, I just realized, preparing for today and looking over the lyrics, that this you are I am title and the use of it is double meaning. It's as in, because of you, who you are, I am who I am. Right? Kind of like the first song that I mentioned. But also... You are, 
you are, right? As in you are, I am, the great I am that God used as a title and as a name for himself in Exodus. Uh, it's really poetic. I hope the writer meant that. It's, it's quite exciting, but it, you know, this is the idea that everything that I am is because of he is, right? I am who I am because of who God is, right? And that should be our worship. That should be our praise and our meditation. All that I am, all that I have is because of you, God, right? Because of you. And rather than talking about, oh, I, you know, I can, I will, and I do, and I, I shall, and, and so forth, it's, and you're going to see this tomorrow, everything should be top down from Him, God, you, God, to me. I receive from you, right? He comes before me. I am because he is. So God is saying that everything you are to us is because I am. And I think that should be our worship today. So how do we apply today's passage? How can we live and be everything because he is? because I am. He is I am. And I think the answer is actually quite simple today. It's very straightforward. This right now, what you do, what you're doing, what I am doing, what we, what you are holding, hopefully in your hand, the living life. Living life as we are meant to live, daily with God, filled with the will, filled with the word of God. Right? And then sharing this, because in filling ourselves with the word of God and with the will of God, we are making him more than me, right? We are putting ourselves behind. We are putting him before us and I behind him, behind the great I am, right? So that he is, so that I am because he is. And then as we share this living life as well, you know, it can be this particular living life and, but also your living life devotional in general, your quiet time, you are doing that, you are helping, you are promoting that and helping others to live in the same way as well. So I pray that today's living life and devotional quiet time will be one of the most powerful in recent memory for you. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are. Uh, we thank you that you are the great I am. And everything that we have, everything, everything that we are, uh, who I am is because of who you are. All that I have is because of who you are. And I pray that I will live that. I, we will live that, Lord, together. The church, the, the community of saints all over the world, everyone who is watching, listening to this, and doing today's living life, oh God, will place you before, above everything, Lord above ourselves, before ourselves, so that our lives are following on the trail and on the tail of the great I am. May you be all that you are in our lives and through our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience.